when homeless combustion victim Francis Bailey was found, as well as an unburnt building, investigators discovered that he was an alcoholic. So could booze account for the contained destruction? Alcohol is not a new explanation for spontaneous human combustion. The legendary band Spinal Tap lost many an exploding drummer due to the phenomenon, allegedly because of conspicuous consumption of alcohol. So, could rock stars be particularly vulnerable? To find out more, I asked forensics officer Nigel Cruttenden about Barry Sudain's lifestyle. Barry might not have been a rock star, but he clearly led a rock and roll existence. On the floor there was a bottle of pills, just a couple in it, and that had a paper label with Hemmer Ever in. What's, that? What's that for? That's um, a drug that's prescribed for alcoholics to actually stop drinking. So Barry was an alcoholic? Yeah. We tested his blood and uh, urine samples for alcohol, and they were quite high. Basically, it equates to him having eight pints of bitter in his body at that time, or 17 shots of, uh, of a spirit. In fact, he wasn't far off the level for a fatality for alcohol. On the surface, the link between alcohol and flames seems tantalisingly plausible. Everybody knows alcohol is flammable. So, just like a flaming shot, could a victim soaked in spirit provide the perfect material to be burnt away by fire? Time to visit the butchers. Well, I want to take this alcohol theory to the absolute limit, and therefore I give you Pinky. No, he's not the latest artwork by Damien Hirst, nor is he the world's first amphibious pig. He is, in fact, cutting-edge science. Because pigs are almost identical to humans in their body composition, by soaking Pinky in alcohol, we can test whether being blind drunk is what caused Francis Bailey and Barry to burn so bizarrely. After a pickling 24 hours, Pinky's literally oozing booze. I'm giving him every chance to burn. So if he doesn't, we could rule out alcohol as a possible cause. For Pinky, instead of being turned into bacon, it's quite literally out of the frying pan and into the fire. At first, it looks like we're well on our way to a hog roast, but closer inspection with a thermometer reveals a problem. The alcohol burns at a relatively cool temperature, around 100 degrees below the ignition temperature of pork and human beings. So no matter how much booze you have and no matter how concentrated it is, you're never going to get a temperature that's hot enough to ignite flesh. Coming up, it's time to reveal the final piece in the spontaneous human combustion jigsaw. I get to explore my pyromaniacal tendencies good. and get on the wrong side of Pinky. The pig has gone completely out of control and has basically exploded and erupted inside the building. I'm on a journey inside spontaneous human combustion, trying to explain what lies behind over 100 mysterious fire deaths. From self-lighting farts to static sparks, I've come up with several explanations to expose the phenomenon. But I still haven't got to the bottom of its most bizarre feature. Contained destruction. One minute, you sat on the sofa with a cup of tea and a good book. The next minute... The next minute, you're a smouldering pile of ash. But the room around you is untouched by the fire. Having ruled out alcohol consumption as a possible cause of contained destruction, I got wind of a new theory and luckily was asked to bring along a pig. So I packed up Pinky, changed into something more appropriate and headed off to a fire training centre where they were about to embark on an experiment so radical it could solve the spontaneous human combustion mystery once and for all. Oh dear. I was an MP, I'd be in the Sunday papers for this. <laughs> Pat Cox from the fire service explained the plan. So, so we're just going to set fire to him like this, is that...? Not is quite. That... Uh, we're also going to dress him with a dressing gown, 
cover him with some blankets, and then we'll set fire to it. So he really is going to be a simulated little cosy... Exactly as if he'd fallen asleep. Fall asleep. Pig. Yep. All right. Well, that sounds pretty sick to me, but there's actually a good explanation for it. Most officials, firemen and pathologists, believe in what's called the wick effect, and, well, you see it demonstrated here. A candle normally would only have one central wick, but this one, we've clothed it, much like a human being, and you can see the result. As the heat from the burning wick begins to melt the wax, the fuel is drawn into the wick, not only reducing the size of the candle, but, crucially, sustaining the burning process until the fuel runs out. Well, a human being, exactly the same thing. Except in this case, it's not candle wax, it's human fat, which is melting into clothes, creating a giant human candle. So when we ignite our dressing gown and blanket-wrapped pig, we're hoping only the fatty bits covered in clothing will burn, leaving the other parts, without fat or clothing around them, intact. So this is how our potential victim of spontaneous human combustion would look before he or she spontaneously combusts. Yeah. They've gone to bed and been found in the morning with the midsection burned away. So the dressing gown should burn and everything within it and you'll just be left with... Um, we should be left with just the extremities. And just... Yeah. Nothing in the middle? Nothing in the middle. This experiment has never been tried in the UK, but if it works, it could be the final nail in the coffin for the spontaneous human combustion theory. Well, we'll just cover him up with this bedspread, which, scary enough, is almost identical to one that I used to sleep under when I was a kid. This is a professional fire testing environment, but it should accurately reflect real life conditions and produce a highly contained fire, leaving Pinky's little piggy possessions unscathed by the blaze. Well, it's going to get very, very hot in here in a minute, so I'm going to run away, but this camera that I'm looking at now is flame-proof, indestructible. Together with £10,000 worth of reinforced Predator-style thermal imaging camera, we're making this the most photographed cremation in history. A little bit of white spirit to get things started, but once this is burnt out, it's all down to the pig. Things are getting a bit warm. About time I left. If you've got a pig in one of your beds at home, for God's sake, don't set fire to it. Within just 45 seconds, the burning bed has turned the room into an unsurvivable inferno. But don't be deceived by the flames. It's not the size of your blaze, it's what you do with it that counts. And all we want our burning bed linen to do is begin melting our pig's fat. What we have here are two sets of thermocouples. Thermocouples basically being thermometers, but in this instance, they're actually inserted under the skin of the pig about two inches deep. And there are three of them, and they're measuring the rise in the pig's temperature. The other thermocouples are at one foot levels all the way up to the top of the building. And what's interesting is that the building started off incredibly hot, but now that has died down. But the pig, meanwhile, has gone the other way. And in fact, in the last few minutes, we've been getting a sound of sizzling and crackling coming from inside there, which sounds to me like um, burning bacon. Over the next hour, the process continues, the room cooling down and the pig getting hotter. Could this be the wick effect that we hoped for? Have we created a very localised, intensely hot fire that will slowly reduce the body mass of the pig and explain the mystery behind spontaneous human combustion? That's amazing. What's going on is that the fire in the room has died down but on the bed, the pig is alight underneath the blankets. The blankets aren't burning anymore, but the pig itself is burning underneath the sheets. Utterly bizarre. Just like the inside-out candle, the blankets have contained the blaze to our pig, and its burning fat has begun to reduce its body mass. 
Now, it's just a question of sitting back and waiting for the giant pork candle to burn itself out. <laughs> <laughs>